the most important thing in the world to me, Eddie. You're not so tough without a gang to back you up, are you? But you were tough that night in the alley, weren't you? You know who I am. I'm the fastest gun alive. And I have marvelous memories. And you live on those memories. And, um, oh, I have some marvelous memories. When Glenn Ford looks back on his long career in Hollywood, it's no wonder his memories can still bring a smile. I don't know if I ever wanted to become an actor. I just wanted to be a part of the theater. And then when I realized how easy it was, I, I figured, why not? Acting may have come easily to Glenn Ford, but typecasting him has never been simple. His remarkable ability to portray so many different characters won him the respect of both his peers and audiences, beginning in the early 1940s and continuing through today. You are permitted to be a criminal's lawyer, but you are not permitted to be a criminal. Ford's chameleon-like persona developed in high school in Santa Monica, California. There, Ford fell in love with the theater, spending all his spare time mastering the jack-of-all-trades job, the stage manager in local theater. When you're a stage manager, you have to understudy all the parts and be ready to go on and do the part if the actor doesn't show up. Can you be heard at the back of a classroom? Well, I... Uh, I did some dramatics at uh, college, sir, and they could always hear me right in the very last row. Though his understudy duties allowed him only sporadic roles, Ford proved he had stage presence. In 1939, at the age of 23, he attracted the attention of one of Hollywood's top movie studios, 20th Century Fox. A screen test was arranged, and Ford won the role that would forever bring him out of the wings and into the spotlight. It was a film with a terrible title, Heaven with a Barbed Wire Fence. Can you believe that? Bad title or not, it was a role that became lucky for Ford. Recognizing his budding acting talent, rival Columbia Pictures made Ford one of their contract players and cast him as the leading man in a string of B pictures, including Blondie Plays Cupid and The Adventures of Martin Eden. I did B pictures for a long time, but you always did it because you enjoyed it. And the hours were sometimes five in the morning until 10 at night, but you didn't complain because you were having a good time. Ford was making his mark in Hollywood, but with the eruption of World War II, his career took a detour. On December 13, 1942, Ford put his country first and his Hollywood dreams on hold when he enlisted in the United States Armed Forces. I went from private to the Navy captain, which is colonel, of course, in the Marine Corps. I'm very proud of that. And I'm very proud of the, the friends I made, who are still my friends. There's something about the service that um, makes you a, a sort of a different man. Upon reliable information, we are moving to intercept the Shinaru. Like other stars who left to join the war effort, Hollywood embraced the young soldier back into its fold, offering him his biggest break yet. On the heels of his discharge, Ford met with Betty Davis to discuss the male lead in her upcoming melodrama, A Stolen Life. She looked me up and down and she said, well, she said, I don't know if you're right for the part, but would you come to the studio next Sunday and test? The part turned out right for Ford, and after three years away from Hollywood, he held his own with one of its toughest leading ladies. Your sister's a very dangerous woman, Katie. She could worm the secrets right out of a sphinx. A Stolen Life was the springboard Ford needed to upgrade his career to A Pictures. Being picked by Betty, it was a tremendous boost, and uh, she made it uh, uh, easy for me and um, prepared me for going on to do Gilda, for example. Doesn't it bother you at all that you're married? What I want to know is... Does it bother you? Glenn Ford's and Rita Hayworth's fiery on-screen romance in Columbia's 1946 film, Gilda, catapulted the young actors to stardom. Hayworth became one of Hollywood's most glamorous sex symbols, and Ford came into his own as a popular male lead. This isn't about us, it's about him. Really? You don't say so. And get this straight. I don't care what you do, but I'm going to see to it that it looks all right to him. From now on, you go anywhere you please, with anyone you please. But I'm going to take you there, and I'm going to pick you up and bring you home. Get that? Exactly the way I'd 
take and pick up his laundry. The explosive chemistry between Ford and Hayworth was ignited in several more films. Off screen, their admiration for one another grew into a lasting friendship. I did five films with her. I think I fell in love with her. She was quite a woman. Another friendship Ford made early in his career was with a fellow up-and-coming actor, William Holden. Together, they became the bad boys of Hollywood, turning Tinseltown inside out. You said it once yourself. You fell on one side of the fence, I fell on the other. That's the way it still is, and I got a feeling that's the way it'll always be. Glenn and Bill remained close until Holden's death in 1981. Bill was my best friend, and um, I miss Bill. There's so many stories about that, of course. And I could go on for hours about Bill. We gotta separate. Separate? Yeah, it's our only chance. I'll catch up with you someday. Texas ain't that big. Well, you ain't much to look at, but I'm sure gonna miss you. Ford and Holden were paired in Columbia's 1941 Western, Texas. Throughout the film, the adventurous duo tackled their own stunts in a friendly game of professional rivalry. Ford proved to be a natural, ultimately saddling up in more than 30 Westerns. We always rode our own horses, yeah. We never used doubles. If you couldn't uh, ride a horse, you shouldn't do a Western. Fate had it that 13-year-old Ford worked as a stable boy for humorist Will Rogers, himself an avid horseman. I remember Mr. Rogers saying to me, kid, you, you like horses? And um, I said, I do, yes, sir. He said, why don't you ride one? I said, I'm not sure if I can. He says, I'll teach you. Oh, please, just this one time, don't buck, huh? From his humble beginnings as a stage manager to being voted America's most popular actor, Glenn Ford had a career in the movies that was as rewarding for the audience as it was for the performer. Now, I want to teach. Well, most of us want to do something creative. I can be a painter, a writer, or an engineer, but I thought that if I could help to shape young minds. He has given us a series of indelible portraits in some of Hollywood's most beloved films. There's one other thing, but it's about sex. Go ahead. <clears throat> I can stand it. It comes to me that we ain't exactly the smartest cowboys that ever lived. All right, you drop it any time you like. Now who's kidding who, Gilda? And it was Glenn Ford's love of acting that came through in each of his performances and kept his fans coming back for more. You know, I've done about 130 different films. That's a lot of films, but I can't remember any of them that I didn't have a good time on. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. I used to worry a lot about not being a big success. I've made peace with myself somewhere between my ambitions and my limitations.